an insurance group that not only will insure you over the phone, but will also raise your coverage without your husband even knowing. I thought we were going to discuss things that affect us both. This doesn't affect you, Steve. <laughs> You'll be dead. <laughs> Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a whoop? Whoa! No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. Here are your hosts, Jerry, Justin, and Al. Hey guys, we're back. It's the Marrow with Children podcast, and we are reviewing Requiem for a Dead Barber, original air date, February 12th, 1989. We're here, we're in the nudie bar, and we are stabbing breasts with our nose hairs. My name is Al. I am joined by... The guy who is just so into Steve, I gotta take him to a fire hydrant and watch the gay away. Jerry, what's up? <gasps> oh. I knew that was gonna be the. I knew it was gonna be something to do with that line. Uh, I'm sorry, it was just too easy. Uh, much like you. I'm very easy. I admit that. Yeah, your wife told us. <laughs> We're also joined by the guy who never danced in a cage when he worked at Troy's, Justin. What's up, buddy? Are you rich? No. <laughs> so, after the death of his longtime barber, Al lets his hair down rather than tolerate a visit to a stylist or salon. <laughs> I'm stopping there. <laughs> <laughs> The, the Bundys get back from a funeral. Oh, it was a nice funeral, wasn't it, Al? <laughs> Come on, honey. Come on. He's dead, Peg. He's dead. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Oh, easy, Al. Nobody lives forever. Well, I thought he would. He had a nice full life. Now be strong, Al. You're just going to have to face the fact your barber is dead. <laughs> is there anyone like a paper boy or a mailman or a barber whose funeral you'd go to, do you think? Or is this really weird? Um, <laughs> like, I can tell you right now, and I am I was probably going to ask you guys this at some point during the episode. Like, do you guys have barbers or do you go to a salon? Uh, Reese cuts my hair, so I don't pay for it. <laughs> Someone cuts that hair? Uh, I, I usually get a haircut once a year, but I skipped it this year. <laughs> the guy who drew our banner, he said he had to spend like a half hour drawing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. My hair is spot on. Yeah, I know. God. He said that that was half the, the payment. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm glad we did it this year. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who knows what this guy's going to look like? Yeah, I usually cut my hair in January and I didn't cut it this year. Hmm. Good for you. So do you go to a barber, Alex? I I do this. Uh, there's a place <laughs> called. It's like a, a hair cutting chain. It's called Great Clips. It's it's around here. Yeah, I know, I know what it is. I have one. Okay. So what they do is in November and December, if you go there, they'll they'll tell you about this promotion they have where they will. It's a it's a prepaid card, and your haircuts if you do prepaid are only $10 each as opposed to 15 if you just go in there and get a haircut. So there's no limit. So I get a haircut 12 times, like once a month. So I buy 12 haircuts for $10 each. So I pay them $120 up front. And then I just keep swiping my card. And they say, oh, you have 11 left. You have 10 left. You have 9 left. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. So I just huh. I just do a chain place. So um, th I guess I have a semi. I mean, the, it's the same four girls who just cut my hair, but I wouldn't go to their funeral. Yeah. OK. So I have a little bit of a different uh, background in, in this territory, which is kind of interesting for this episode. So 
Um, I used to just go to like a salon, like just some some chain or something like that, uh, until about two years ago when I seen that there was a salon on the road that I drive to go to work and it said uh, we now have a barber in the shop or something like there was a sign. And I was like, Oh, like an actual barber. So, uh, my friend who I work with went there cause his barber moved or something. So he needed a new barber and turns out like this dude that that's in there is like really cool. He's like, I don't know, like 28, 29 or something, just a couple years older than me, maybe like 30 max. Uh, and he's like a legit barber. Like he went to barber school. Um, and he actually worked in that shop for about a year. So I would go get my haircut there, uh, every month for a year. And then he actually made enough money and opened up his own shop, which is super nice. Like it's super like manly. It's like a straight up man cave in there. You know what I mean? And it's just like that. He, he, can you drink while you're getting your haircut? I don't know, actually, maybe, (laughs) um, but up on the wall, like he has like these old, like, like, like metal fences and stuff that is all like, he just bought it online, like all real stuff, like old world, world war two barber chairs and stuff and old cabinets. and, And it's just a really big space. There's like all these cool books on the table that are interesting and, and stuff like that. And he's a really cool dude you know he you, you could get like the shave done he like shaves your neck with a straight razor does he cut your nose hair he probably would would he honestly. moose him i don't know uh probably not moose but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like so it's like a legit barber you know what i mean like so he does the the towel on the head the really he does the steam towel yeah uh wow. he does the um like he'll hit you with cologne if you're going somewhere or something like he's he's a legit barber and i go to this guy you go in there and you I, I totally get what I was saying. Like you go in there to unwind. Like you you like talk about, you know, whatever's going on at, at work or whatever and vent a little bit and just just BS, talk about sports or TV or or anything, you know what I mean? And it's like a it's like a bro type thing instead of like some chick cutting my hair asking me if I have a girlfriend. <laughs> Does he have like a barber pole outside that twirls? Uh yeah. <laughs> That's like the funniest thing. Those barber poles, that dates back to the Middle Ages, believe it or not. It was like on a staff or a pole with the, now it's the red, white, and blue stripes. That's It was blood, it, right? Yeah. The okay. red was supposed to represent the bloodletting and other medical procedures to heal the sick. Um, and the white was supposed to represent bandages. And the blue was to represent, I guess, cutting hair. <laughs> Yeah, because they like sometimes the barber would be like the dentist as well. Yeah, they would perform like bloodletting and other medical procedures. Why did it have to be him? Who meant so much to so many? Why couldn't it have been somebody nobody would have missed? The wrench of a human being. Why couldn't it have been your mother? <laughs> well, I'm sure there is still someone alive who can cut all twelve of your remaining hairs for a buck and a quarter. <laughs> Wasn't the money peg? Tony knew my hair and he cared. Remember that time I had that bad case of dandruff in 83? Yeah, I remember. The whole family gathered some coal and a carrot, and we made Frosty the dandruff man. <laughs> Tony was there to hold my hand through that rough time. Yeah, going to Tony was a family tradition. My father went to him, I went to him, I took Bud to him. Until the other kids started calling Bud the bullhead. <laughs> and it broke my heart when Bud refused to go. I had to tell Tony Bud died. <laughs> together that's the kind of guy tony was everybody loved him weird that you have two hair centric episodes so close together the, the writers after they wrote uh the gypsy crowd they're like you know we haven't done it in a while a hair episode <laughs> <laughs> we also get another connection with um al's dad because al said uh his dad went to the same barber right which i always find it any anything i can find more because we hear about Peg's mom all the time, you know, how it should have been her dad mm-hmm. instead of the barber and all that nonsense. But we, but like the one time we really got to hear about Al's dad was in the worst episode I've ever seen of Married with Children, the Ferguson, and it was about a toilet. So with this one, it was more, it was very 
very much more interesting to actually hear, okay, his dad went to the barber. That's why it means so much to him. Now, Bud saying he had a he stopped going because he kept giving a bowl cut. I always thought that was more popular in the later nineties. Yeah, nineties, right? right? Like ninety two. Oh, maybe it was popular because oh, Bud cle- clearly it. has a really cool haircut. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, because his yeah this new guy is so much better, Bud. Uh, well, I guess in the eighties a bowl cut was not cool, but for some reason it became cool in the nineties. Maybe because of like uh, the kids on Home Improvement. Yeah, in the 90s, early 90s, the haircut that I always heard or did and knew that was the thing was like uh, the Zach Morris haircut where it's shaved on the bottom and long on top. Yeah, that's that's it. That's kind of like the advanced bowl cut, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know how you'd want to comb it, it flat down or whatever, like Spock, but uh, it was always shaved on the bottom. At like a number one or two or whatever, and the top you could do whatever you want. Like it was long. My hair could never do that. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, mine can't either. Yeah, wow, <laughs> I did that. My hair used to be like twenty times curlier than it is now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, but I wanted to wait till they packed the dirt over the old butcher. <laughs> that old butcher cried when you died, bud. <laughs> I'll bet he did. Who else would let him put a cereal bowl on their head while he said? I'm going to make you look like Sinatra. <laughs> but your father's right. We should show a little respect, even for the hated dead. And like my mother said when I married your father, if you can't feel it, fake it. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't care anymore, marry it. <laughs> now, I'd like a moment of silence for my barber. Excuse me? Amen. <laughs> Now that Tony's worm food, I can get out of these funeral clothes. I I don't know if I'm supposed to focus on how hot she looks in this dress or that she just said that. Dude, then she starts talking about riding around in the hearse, and I'm just like, what is she, the preppy Elvira? (laughs) Screw it. I'm getting in the back with a casket. Me, her, and a casket in the back of a hearse at someone's funeral sounds like a good time. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dad, you know how I've been um, bothering you about a sports car? Well, forget it. I want a hearse. I was just cruising around the cemetery with Boris, the driver. Oh, God, was it cool. And on Friday night, he's taking me out and promised to have a real dead body in it. But Mom said it's wrong to use a guy for his hearse, so can I have one of my own, please? Well, Al, she has been doing better in school. Why am I thinking they buried the wrong guy? And, of course, the driver that Kelly names, Boris, uh, you know, not only married children, but I'm also a classic horror expert, so I know that she's referring to Boris Karloff, who is most notably known for playing Frankenstein in 1931, The Mummy. He was in The Bride of Frankenstein, and he was the voice of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. <laughs> I was just cruising around the cemetery with Boris, the driver. Oh, God, was it cool. Did you guys ever have that kind of weird, uh, because you're into horror, did you guys ever say you wish you could just drive a hearse because that seems cool? No. No, but it's because I don't drive. Oh, why do I keep talking to you about this? I don't know. Um, Oddly enough, my neighbor, just a couple houses down, um, I used to get, they were a little bit older than me, but they would always, like, even when I was, like, 15 they would invite me to their like cake parties um they actually the oldest daughter has a hearse and she used to go to like hearse meetings and it would be a bunch of people would drive to like the dawn of the dead mall and like be out in the parking lot with their hearses and like like a hearse convention almost really uh so yeah that's that's apparently a thing wow you know club. what's what's funny is Doug Bradley, the guy who played Pinhead, was selling his hearse like a few months ago on Facebook. <laughs> well, Al parks uh, his car on the lawn and lets it die instead of mowing it. Now, that's like really lazy. <laughs> I mean, I like the fact that Steve and Marcy show up to accuse Al of stealing the roses in the middle of the night. And of course, Al denies it. And then Steve's like, oh, I wonder who this watch belongs to. Yeah, it doesn't work anyway, so what's the difference? 
Oh, that hat. I love that. It was great. They stole their roses to go to a funeral. That's great. He was like, much like the hair on your legs. I need the help of a trained professional. Whoa. (laughs) It's weird. Al says that he would go to Steve's barber, but he still cares what he looks like. Which is apparently not true. Steve cares what he looks like. Al doesn't. What Al should have said is I would go to your barber if I wanted to look less like a man. Right. That would have been a proper Steve line. But I got a question. Okay. Was the guy who, the barber who died, was he the only one who worked at that barber shop? My buddy Gary that I work with, like his dad owns a barber shop. Like, and it's always multiple people. So I just, I don't know. I didn't understand the whole interaction here. But then again, you know what? On Sons of Anarchy, I only think I ever saw two barbers ever working in that one place. Oh, Floyd. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, one other guy in the background. Floyd the Barber is supposedly a thing because because Nirvana did a song called Floyd the Barber on their album Bleach. So, Sons of Anarchy having a guy named Floyd as the barber, that was not a mistake. That That's definitely something. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's, hmm. like, I don't know, some guy in the Andy Griffith show or whatever, but... <laughs> Like it's not really relevant to this episode, but uh, but now I'm super interested. Yeah, right. In Floyd the Barber. <laughs> now we have to find that out too. Oh, holy shit! You said the Andy Griffith show, right? Yeah, yeah. It's from the Andy Griffith show. What? Floyd Lawson is a fictional character on the American sitcom The Andy Griffith Show, who was likely inspired by barbers in Andy Griffith's real life hometown of Mount Airy, North Carolina. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. I, I swear on my Didn't life. You know that? I swear on this show, somehow we can never record again. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's weird. I can't believe Kurt Cobain knew that. Yeah. And it, right underneath it is an article about how Kurt Cobain did write the song inspired by wow. Floyd the Barber from the show. I, I never would imagine he'd even watch that. That's amazing. Well, there you go, guys. The more you know. Uh, I wonder if Alex psychic. Am, Alex, are you a gypsy? Let's talk about Al's hair for a second, at least. I don't think there was too much to go into here, but um, so uh, is there anything that spectacular about Al's hair that could not be duplicated somewhere else? I mean, <laughs> does it really matter? I mean, of course, it's the principle of it, and uh, here's and here's the real crux of the whole episode. Are, are we to believe that in 1989 it was that hard? to find anything but a beauty salon to go to get your hair cut? Because I don't think I have ever had this problem. When I was a kid, I knew one barber spot. Now there's like literally like six or seven. But like as a kid, like I like not even as a kid, like when I was like 15, like I knew of one. Okay. I think you have more guys caring about their image and having their fair faucet hair and, and things like that. And I think yeah. that's like you have the, the I guess, pussification of men happening. Hard yeah, along for, with the mini balls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think I think I think because of that for the show, I'll let that go. If I can believe that only one barber worked at this shop. I could believe that. Yeah, then I can believe that that there's only one barber in that town. Yeah, I think you're right, Jerry, because if you – let's, you know, put it all together even just from Air with Children. Think of the guys at Troy's, you know, Zorro and the construction worker. Think of the dude who replaced Al on the New Market Maulers baseball team. Think of the cop who was a stripper and Marcy said, we don't pay you to talk. Like think of all their hair. And that is what was happening, I guess, in the 80s. So there was a big boom for that kind of thing going on, which you couldn't get in a barber shop. So, yeah, there probably was more salons at this point. That was like the happening thing, and everybody jumped on that. So I guess a barber shop would be hard to come by when you consider that's what's happening in the 80s. But can you believe that Bud is going to have Buck crap and piss all over this guy's freshly dug grave? You know what? Bud is super disrespectful. Bud is like holding a, a, a grudge. <laughs> like, I can't believe. Now, was death a prevalent source of humor in 1989? Like, how many shows 
would mock the death of people? Not a lot. This, I, but it's a common thing in this show. They've they've played with death before. They played with death in the last episode. They played with the boss's death. The bosses, yeah. They made fun of that. Yeah. They talk about Al's suicide constantly. <laughs> Al, why don't you just find some guy with good hair and ask him where he gets it cut? Well, sure, I'll compliment him on his great hair, and then he'll compliment me on my bedroom eyes, and we'll live together and make terrariums. <laughs> I'm going upstairs to be alone with my grief. What is a terrarium? Can you teach me that? Well, I want to say it was... Is it like a aquarium with yes, water? Yeah, but it's all like like uh, plants and stuff. Oh, okay. Like it's all like... Like his house will look like a jungle? Yes, you're, you're putting plants everywhere, but you do them in a more like feng shui kind of artsy way. Hmm. Okay. Is, is what it is. It's... I'm having a hard time explaining it, but Justin's kind of right. You're putting plants in an aquarium. Okay. I gave Buck a nice big dish of water, and I'm going to take him for a walk in Tony's grave. <laughs> he didn't get to go to the funeral, but I know he wants to say goodbye in his own special way. So Peg gets fixated on Al dying, and it'll take her nine months to remarry, minimum. Now, is, is, that, <laughs> is she trying to, like, is she saying that that's how long it takes to get a shotgun wedding going? I, I, it almost sounds like that was what she was going for. Okay, because that would be her second one now. Death is something you're never really prepared for. Well, it does make you think. I mean, one minute you're in perfect health, and then the next minute, poof, Al's dead. <laughs> Gee, and I'd be left with no income and no insurance. What would I do? Get a job? <laughs> no, I said, what would I do? <laughs> I mean, of course I would remarry, but that could take up to nine months. <laughs> and what? What if Al didn't die till I was in my 40s? Then where would I be? <laughs> well, thank God Steve cares enough to get insurance. Why, he's worth more dead than he is alive. <laughs> well, so is Al. You know what, with food stamps and welfare and all. <laughs> How much is yours worth, Dad? A cool mill. Wow. <laughs> what I could do with a million dollars. Hey, Marcy, knowing he's worth that much, have you ever, uh, late at night while he's sleeping, thought about... <laughs> in the sky. Peggy, you really should get insurance for Al. Uh, honey, I thought I was only insured for 250000 Steve, please, this is girl talk. <laughs> I know an insurance group that not only will insure you over the phone, but will also raise your coverage without your husband even knowing. I thought we were going to discuss things that affect us both. This doesn't affect you, Steve. <laughs> You'll be dead. By the way, do you kn you remember how last episode we were talking about, like, looking at people's faces? Last week, yeah. Yeah. So when Steve interrupts Marcy and Marcy looks at him and is just go, this is none of your business because you will be dead. Her eyes constantly dart back and forth. And it kind of creeped me out. Dude, it is amazing that you just said this. I actually made a note that it t to look at Marcy when Peg says her uh, Al dying when she's in her forties and stuff. Marcy turns to look at Steve, and it is the greatest thing. She has like the cutest little smile, smirk kind of look on her face, like she's trying to hold back laughing or something like I can't tell what she's actually doing and it almost looks like she's about to say the words that she's gonna say next but she stops herself so that there's a certain I guess pause that they want wanted there but she almost said it right away but just look at her right after here I'll play the clip that you're supposed to look at Marcy's face in so next time you watch this what if Al didn't die till I was in my 40s then where would I be 
Well, thank God Steve cares enough to get insurance. Yeah, like her face in this scene is just really good. Right. You have to stare at Marcy during this whole part. The same way you had to stare at Al when he was getting his fortune told in the last episode. Yeah. yeah. The only good thing is like you're drawn to look at Marcy in the scene because she's the one doing the talking between Peggy and Steve. Right. So, so, so it's a lot easier to catch. Anyhow, Peggy, all you need is for Al to give a sample of his blood and urine and you're home. Hmm. Well, the urine would be easy. I could just put a little cup five feet from the bowl. <laughs> gonna be tough I could use a million though we all could well we have to go Steve has to sweep out the gutters and I'm going to hold the ladder for him uh, I love you Marcy that's nice dear and Steve is sort of offended by this when I would be like well who cares get whatever you can I mean do I have to pay more a month but otherwise, you know, it is it is kind of weird though that like it does seem like Marcy ha- Marcy has a murder plot working on. Like maybe she knows about the slave thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a pinch of salt, one degree. Yeah, she's she's pissed. Like I'm, I'm kind of fearing for Steve right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, and Marcy says we're gonna go sweep the gutters, and I'm holding the ladder. Like, oh my god, dude. Like, are you serious, Marcy? What happened to the two innocent kids that sat on the couch? The Bundys. The Bundys happened. Right, Alex. I know. Do you see what they're just, they're doing to this relationship? <sighs> I don't know what happened to these two. I when this when this all happens and and they get divorced, I'm blaming the Bundys. Just so you know. Oh, I will have a essay on. <laughs> You're gonna have like bullet points of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when Al did this? And then Steve started eating steak and watching boxing on the Phantom Network. I'm going to watch boxing. <laughs> the next joke is so funny. Oh, yeah, I called my I called all my friends last night and she goes, oh, what did he say? And he goes, oh, he's still in Sam Quentin for killing his wife. He said it was worth it. Because <laughs> he only has one friend like Jerry. Hey, whoa, time out. I have more than one friend. I have two right here recording the show with me. Uh, I'm a co-worker, dude. Co-worker, dude. <laughs> I have the owner of the nudie bar as a friend. Don't get me involved, you dick. I, okay. Elvis was... Elvis was really friendly with me. Yeah, hey, listen, boy. That was one episode, one and done. Okay. Wow, dude. Um, I have... Well, my cat really likes me when I give him food. <laughs> okay. I don't know, man. Everyone's striking out with you right here. Uh, if, uh, if something really cool, in about five or six episodes, the Sam Quentin thing comes back. Really? Uh, yeah, somebody has a bumper sticker about it, no. but I, I can't get... Now, Alex, with your job in real life, would that be considered uh, under the skilled illiterates? No. Okay. I didn't know if you had to read or not. Can we talk about this really awkward line where he says he wants a barber, a man who likes girls but hates women? Where where are you finding your barbers? Are they also the cook at Camp Arawak? Well, they call them baldies. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Like this line. That's the way to sell Al Bundy's character because you wonder why don't you want to have sex? Are you like a weirdo? You know, it is odd for a guy not to want to have sex. So Al sells this to us by saying, yeah, but it's my wife. Why would I want to have sex with my wife? So the way he bring he kind of pulls us back in is by relating to us because everybody likes hot chicks. So are you are you trying to say that by likes girls but hates women? He means likes young 18 year old hotties that we see all the time in this show and not like women like peg and marcy who are yeah, like yeah that's okay. how I, that's how i took it okay fair enough uh back to two months later and al starting to look like <laughs> uh rejected hulk hogan oh god yeah so al the skull it we brought it up again yeah the skull it but al has as like a variation he has a parking lot 
skull it because he's only missing the two spaces uh, to either side of the center of his head. You want to know something absolutely crazy, dude? Back in the 90s, my uncle had hair that looked just like that, like all wiry and froed out like that. Really? Same length, everything. Wow. It was he holding out of going to a, a salon? I don't know what the hell he was doing because for the last like most of my <laughs> life, he's been bald. So I don't know. Can you trick him into sending you a picture? Just say, hey, dude, remember when I was this age and we hung out? Do you have any pictures of that? Because that was great times for me. And get him to send you a picture so we could put it on our Facebook. If I have pictures, I would have them in this house them currently at because that's where the picture all the old family pictures are stored but all right that's your job for the week if i could end up finding it i will totally that would be funny (laughs) did fat guys in granny glasses ever come up to him and ask him how he liked the new dead album (laughs) no oh okay they should have yeah al's the one holdout he will not get his hair cut in a beauty salon so everyone else did now he looks like a jackass Pretty much. I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe what he looks like. I can only imagine Ed O'Neill, you know, once they got done, him looking and saying, I can't believe I'll, I'm going to go on national. I'm going to walk out there and be on national television uh, looking like this. I like his um, rant he goes on here. He does another one of his owl rants where he's like, they take away things in the name of progress, take away pinball for video games. What do I care if a monkey makes it to the top of the building unless he throws his wife out? Yeah. <sighs> And look at cartoons. A cartoon used to have a mouse hit a cat over the head with a frying pan and flatten it out. And now they just talk about it. And I blame women and pacifists. Yeah, that I didn't like that too much because... Because, one, the cartoons in 1989... Yeah, they did not go to counseling. No, you had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You had G.I. Joe. Like, I guess G.I. Joe had their segments at the end where they're like the more you know kind of stuff. But you still in the eighties, we in the nineties, we still had pretty hardcore cartoons, right? And 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 by the way, we had, well, uh, oh no, we didn't have it yet. Wow, I was gonna say the Simpsons with Itchy and Scratchy. No, that actually didn't happen till December of eighty nine. Now the funniest thing about this is, is later on in life, Al uh, Ed O'Neill would go in to star in the Disney film Wreck It Ralph. Voicing a character named Mr. Litwack who owned and managed a video arcade. Wow. Was it Noah's Arcade? No, it was not Noah's Arcade. <laughs> um, but you know what's funny about that? Someone in this episode was in that movie. Really? Wayne's World. Yep. Wayne's World. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he did stunts in Wayne's World. Um Frank Lloyd, who played Norris, was also in Children of the Corn 5, The Abyss, but he did stunts for Spider-Man 3, Friday 13th remake, a lot of the Transformers movies, Independence Day, Scream, Wayne's World, and A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Wait, is Norris the black guy? Uh, No, the black guy is Garrett Morris. Who and the black guy's name is Russ. Russ, right, um, right. And he's from Two Broke Girls, Martin, Cone's Head, a made-for-TV movie called Earth Angel. And he was in The Stuff. And this is his second appearance as the character Russ and his last appearance as the character Russ on this show. Man, what, was he with a guy working in the yard for $5 when uh, Tiffany came over? Or was he the guy in the poker game? Ah, poker game. Yeah, I think it was the poker yeah. game. It was uh, at Russ's house, actually. I think his apartment, right? And surprisingly, like, we have your other guy that you love that was in Friday the 13th Part 3 back as Barney. But we also have a, a chicken here who was in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Really? Really? Stacy Alden, who plays Fran, the chick who asked uh, if you're if Al is rich. Oh, was she the nurse who got naked? Yes. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. Yeah. Mind blown. And then that chick in the same uh, place in the pink dress, Charlie. Please tell me she's naked somewhere. Uh, I I did not look, Ugh. but Spradling was in To Sleep With a Vampire, The Doors. No, she was naked. She was naked in Wild at Heart. Are you serious? Guys, we got to take a break. We'll be right back <laughs> after this message. 
Hey guys, this is Al. The three of us here at No Man love doing the Married Children podcast, and we can only do it thanks to your support through patreon.com slash marriedwithchildrenpodcast. What's that? You don't know what that is? Well, let me tell you. There's a huge amount of stuff you'll find at patreon.com slash marriedwithchildrenpodcast that you won't find anywhere else. Do you want to hear a season wrap-up show for seasons 3 through 11, which won't be available in the regular feed as we continue to work our way down the line? Want access to all of our bonus content? Basically, that means anything besides the reviews of the episodes themselves. Future exclusive interviews, Marrow Children comic book specials, reviews of movies starring different Marrow Children cast members. That's right, you want to hear us review Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? Little Giants? Dutch? Hell, we'll even review Hondo. How about our future Spotlight specials where we highlight one Marrow with Children cast member and explore their life and career. We will even have Marrow with Children commentary tracks. Watch an episode along with us. Remember guys, this is a weekly show so you get all that for only $1.25 per show. Yes guys, all that is available for just $5 a month. You can't do $5 a month or don't want the bonus content and just want to support the show and buy us a girly girl beer and throw us a dollar or two a month? If 500 of you did that, we wouldn't have to eat toaster shakings or tang wipe. So please, consider becoming a patron and support your favorite podcast. Patreon.com slash Married with Children Podcast. Thanks, Dad. (laughs) Uh, Wow. Well, we're back. Uh, Well, well rested. We're we're well rested. Um, (laughs) God, I love doing this show. Did I ever mention that? Yeah, but you know what? JP is right. There are so many chicks who are on this show who are naked elsewhere. Yeah. Like, they know how to pick them. Yeah, this show gets cooler by the podcast. <laughs> what are their, that's their interviewing process. Have you been naked before? Be a lot cooler if you was. <laughs> Let it, come back here after you were. <laughs> uh Come on, family. Can't you get behind old dad on this one? Well, we can't get in front of you. Your nose hairs would spear us. (laughs) That's it. Now, I never thought this would happen to me. Life has taken everything else away from me. I quit. That's it. I'm going to a salon. (laughs) Wherever Tony is, I hope they buried him face down so he never has to live to see my shame. Because Al Bundy... <laughs> it's gonna get washed and blown. <laughs> now we got a new set. Uh, Al breaks down and decides to go to a salon, or as Jerry He's says, gonna go get washed and blown. Or as Jerry says, a saloon. <laughs> to be fair, I get washed and blown at a saloon. So, well, hopefully, there's a lot of hot cowboys around when this happens. Yeah, usually. Uh, two. Gay guys, I guess, welcome Al to this place. And one of them has braces on, and he's like 30. Yeah, they really play up the gay stereotypes here. Oh, yeah, like, dude. I don't think this would really fly today, honestly. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I don't know if it would or wouldn't, because I don't really feel like when they make their gay jokes... I, it doesn't ever seem hurtful or disrespectful to me. I always like feel like a gay person would be like, that was funny. Like almost like Amanda is like approving every one they do. Like, no, 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 you can't do that. That's too far. I don't really get that vibe. Like, I feel like I feel, I feel like that if I was gay, I don't think that I would be, you know, disrespected or anything watching this, but um, I don't really get the, I don't really feel up in arms about like anything ever. So, but I'm just saying like, I I don't know if I, it seems, it seems like in today's time, like this would just, I think it would get a lot of scrutiny if it came out right now. This Fair enough. I think it's cool to know that we lived in a world where that didn't happen. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about those bears? Well, if people wouldn't feed them, they wouldn't raid the campsites. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think about the White Sox. Oh, by the way, I had closed captioning on for this episode. And uh, when, you know, when Al sits in the chair and he puts his hand down his pants? Yeah. Uh, in closed captioning, it says, passes gas. <laughs> oh, so we're supposed to believe that's why the guy was turned off by that gesture? 
Oh. I I rewound it and listened, and there is a tiny fart sound, but it honestly could have just been him like moving in the chair because he kind of moves to put his hand in there. Well, I'm gonna go ahead here. We we watched this at the nudie bar. I'm gonna go ahead and play this. I'm gonna rewind because we we watch DVDs on repeat here. Okay, here we are. I I okay. Ready, guys? I'm gonna play it. Everybody, listen very closely. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's sort of like a mixture. Yeah. Like I said, it. but in closed captioning, it says, passes gas. And it is, I played this on my PS4, the Mill Creek DVD. Hmm. I wonder if my DVD has that. If it does, I'll do the screen cap. Well, you know, the thing is, it, it doesn't have subtitles um, on the disc. But I guess my PS4 can do closed captioning by itself or something. What else is funny is that Al asks this guy... What does he think about the bears? <laughs> and clearly Al lives in Chicago. That guy's clearly Jerry. <laughs> He's a guy. He lives in Chicago. He's clearly referring to the amazing football team. Uh, at least in 1989, they still might have been. In my notes, I had this bear joke is going to be used on me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I knew, I, I knew one of you were going to be like, this guy is, is Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry would say. I would at least not know you were talking about a sports team. What about those bears? Man, I agree. Bears are getting dangerous. So Justin's right. That's If somebody said to you, so how about those bears? You would say if, if people would stop feeding the damn things, they wouldn't. I would not automatically think a sports team. Really? You would think the animal? When you say bears, to me, I think of bears. I think of, like, Stephen Colbert yelling about how dangerous bears are. Huh. Huh. Okay. Hi. Uh, did you get your hair done here, too? Ever since I could find an old man to pay for it. <laughs> Do you like it? Oh, yes. Are you rich? No. Oh. <laughs> Wow, so we get to see her naked in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. The blonde. Now, even, let's just say Al was rich. With that hair he has, what's the bigger sacrifice? Dating v- Vander Duty, or whatever his name was, in, in the last episode, uh, The Gypsy Cried? Being with him if you're a hot chick, or being with Al with that hair? What is the bigger sacrifice for money? I would take Al over the other dude. With that haircut? Yeah. What about you, uh, Justin? <laughs> oh, man. I, what did Jerry say? He'd take Al. Ugh. Dude, you can close your eyes and ignore some hair. You can't uh, close your eyes and ignore an years. 80-year-old man. Yeah, an 80-year-old man's pot belly. <laughs> okay, maybe you're right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Trust me, when it comes to having sex with dudes on this show, I'm pretty sure I am the... <laughs> You're the authority on this? I'm the authority. <laughs> yeah, me and Justin, we have a million things going through our head, like, why are we answering this? Um, <laughs> can we move on? I'm immediately like, well, yeah, the 80-year-old pot belly would be, would be way worse. Yeah, you have me. a total definite answer. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm here wondering why I brought it up. I know, because this is such a me question. We're, we're like, oh, maybe how Al affects Steve, I'm starting to affect you. Yeah, it's going to reverse here. Yeah. So, now the hot chick, uh, her name is Murphy. She's wearing this, like, pink tight dress, and she is going to seemingly cut Al's hair. Hi, I'm Murphy. What can I do for you? Do you know how to dance in a cage? <laughs> I mean, no, I need a haircut. Well, come with me. That's a nice place you got there. <laughs> no, my, my old barber used to charge a buck twenty-five. How much are you guys? Sixty dollars. No, seriously. <laughs> Ooh, aren't we woolly? Yeah, uh, you guys really aren't sixty dollars, are you? Well, you know our motto: people are suckers. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that to the customers. <laughs> oh, well, just relax. 
Leave your head in our hands. We'll start with a nice scalp massage. All righty. He was paying a dollar twenty-five to get a haircut. That's that seems very cheap, you know. For but if we're talking, uh, what February nineteen eighty-nine yeah. versus today? You said a dollar twenty-five. Yeah. Two four fifty four today. <laughs> what? That means that haircuts are outrageously priced. Wait, wait, time out. That means at the salon at sixty dollars. Are women going to salon and paying a hundred and twenty dollars to get their hair done today? Yeah, like sometimes. I, I think that it's like it, you know, if you go to get it like all changed around and stuff, it could cost you a ton. Like, Alex, has your wife ever done that? Does she go and blow money at a salon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. How much does she spend? Do you know or do you just not want to know? I do not. <laughs> okay, like, you do, you just do not want to even guess what that costs. Dude, when I hear what she spends on her nails, I don't want to know about her hair. And Whoa. she has wow. some of the nicest hair you've ever seen in your life. So, I could imagine... So uh, the gay guy – so this hot girl in the pink dress, she seems like she's going to give Al his haircut. She gets him over the chair. He closes his eyes. She starts massag- massaging his scalp. And then she, The old switcheroo. Yeah, she pulls a switcheroo and has a gay guy doing it. Al's all into it. So now this gay guy's doing this. Al is like shocked to find out. Now everyone's sitting in the dark like it's the episode dump of my own because – Al won't even come in the house unless he thinks everyone's sleeping. And he eventually does, and they're, they should be on the floor laughing, because Al looks like the munchkins from The Wizard of Oz. It is horrible. Well, how do you like it? You look like a fruit, Al. Thanks, Peg. Pretty cool, Dad. It gives you that no closet can hold me look. Now leave dad alone. You're still going to wear men's clothing, aren't you? Oh, honey, we're just teasing. You look fantastic. Doesn't he, kids? Great. Yummy. (laughs) See, it's unanimous. By the way... Your nose hairs look somehow longer. They moose them. <laughs> but they wouldn't cut them. The important thing is I, uh, I feel cool. It is the most grotesque haircut I've ever seen in my entire life. I preferred the long hair, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, if we had to make a poll... Uh, would you rather have Al's hair before or after this? Ugh, before. I'll take the long hair. Before. Justin? Uh, I would definitely take before because at least you look like you can jack somebody up or, like, <laughs> you look like a scary homeless dude. But, like, that other stuff is just, like, you look lame. <laughs> yeah, you, you look like you're about to tell Dorothy that nobody could see the wizard, not know how, not no way. It is just bizarre. And they moosed Al's nose hairs. So now, here's the big uh, debate. Does Peg, I mean, does Al get sex? Yes, he does. He still gets a sex point because sex was on the table and Peggy denied it. Just like when he offered it to her when they were sleeping in the shoe store. She said no, no sex happened, but sex was brought up. He gets a point. Yep, guys, that was the great escape. Yep. And as the, the, the rule maker for the sex points, I am declaring Al getting a point. Okay. Now, you're writing all this down, right? Yep. Okay. For our season three Patreon exclusive wrap up show. Guys, you don't want to miss that one, believe me. I can tell you already. I can, I can envision how good it is. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, but I had a rinse, mousse, and protein pack. Hey, man. <laughs> Watch that cigar, man. You're going to get smoke in my hair. (laughs) And Mr. Freddy says it's hell on my conditioner, man. (laughs) Mr. Luscious won't let me put on my construction hat. Ruins the integrity of the cut. (laughs) 
You look good, Al. Yeah, we're studs. <laughs> so what are we gonna do tonight? Put on our baby dolls, uh, drink a few beers, and give each other spankings? <laughs> about shooting some poo? No, no, the severity of the neon will ruin the highlights in my hair. <laughs> Bowling? No, we get beat up. But what, what can we do that won't put any stress on our hair? We could go see La Cajo Full. <laughs> it's really a fine play. You're a plumber, Louie. <laughs> I was never really comfortable as a plumber. I... <laughs> So Al turned completely feminine. Everybody does. Everything that him and his buddies do, it seems, rides on the integrity of their hair. <laughs> Which is... I never knew a haircut could affect somebody so much. Like, just because you have to go to a salon, you suddenly have such a vested interest in your hair... Sometimes a sometimes a haircut can just change a woman. <laughs> yeah, are they like are they brainwashing these guys? Like what what are they doing when their heads go under that thing that they close down that I, the hair? Yeah, because it's weird. Because it's like, well, what do we want to do? Well, y'all want to go play pool? No, the neon lights are bad for my hair. What do you want to go bowling? No, we'd get beat up. Well, that I can understand. That I give a pass to. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if all of them can't find a barber. Wouldn't all the other people they normally bowl with not be able to find barbers either? Wouldn't they all be going to a, a salon? I don't know. But what's with the one guy going completely gay? And they said he's he's too far gone. Oh, yeah. He goes, I was never really comfortable as a plumber. <laughs> now, what's funny is when Al brings all the guys over there except for Louie. He goes, it's all over for Louie and Russ, you're slipping. We never see either one of them on the show ever again. Ooh. Uh, that is Russ's last appearance, and Louis is that's his only appearance. I guess those two guys eventually did slip through the crack. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now let, let us explain to you how to open up a fire hydrant so you can wash the gay away. <laughs> if we can just wash the gay away, why were we doing like the whole shock therapy to erase the gay? <laughs> you literally could have just give them a bath. Right. A big uh, like uh, adjustable wrench, and this could have been taken care of. Yeah. Look, it's all over for Louie, and Russ, you're slipping. <laughs> but we got a chance. Here's what we got to do. We go out and find a fire hydrant. We turn that sucker on. We stick our heads in the hole and wash the gay away. You mean go outside without nets? <laughs> I think we better hurt. <laughs> And afterwards, no matter how long it takes, we find a barber. A real barber. Let's go. Uh, Louis, come on. Uh, we're going dancing. I want a steak. I want beer. I want a woman. I'm not dressed for dancing. Well, kids, your daddy's worthless again. The insurance company found out he was a shoe salesman. They refused to cover him because of the high suicide rate. So, in other words, dead or alive, we still starve. Then why do we keep him? Without him, we'd have to get jobs. And Buck seems to like him. I'm not even going to point out how stupid that is. That joke is great. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine that they approved her and then said, whoa, 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 this guy's a shoe salesman? No, we're good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I like how right after this, Bud is like, I know Kelly is is, is dad's natural daughter, but I'm a one-night stand with the cool dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe Joe Dirt. And then Kelly gets all upset, and she's like, I heard that. I'm not Dad's kid either. Yeah, it's it's weird. They're not even going as far as Jim and Natalie with bags on their heads. They're they're just ashamed to be the, the, the kid, and that's about it. Hey! I did it! I found a barber! <laughs> but not just any barber. I found Tony's dad in Cicero. He's 97 and half blind. 
But he taught Tony everything he knows. He even trimmed my nose hairs. Look. Look. Now that's old world craftsmanship right there. Now I know you think I'm crazy, but there's nothing like going to a real barber. He found him in Cesaro, which uh, I, I looked it up. That is actually a suburb in of Chicago. <laughs> really? It is located in Cook County. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Even though his hand shakes a little. <laughs> I do like the, the visual gag when he's just like, his hands shake a little, and then as he walks up the stairs, there's those two bandages on the back. Yeah. Yeah, would you just go to that guy again and again just because? Uh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, like, I would get Yeah, if you searching. cut me once, uh... We're done. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we're going to cut out of here. Listen to something you've never heard before. It, we're going to drop some interesting tidbit of knowledge on you guys. You're going to find out where to find us on Facebook, YouTube, the whole works. This is information that we've never broadcast before. So check this out, and we'll be right back with our review of this episode. Our ratings, I mean, of this episode. We'll be right back. Wait, isn't it the same thing we show every... 45 times, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> no Ma'am will be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Just type in www.facebook.com slash groups slash Married with Children podcast. Be sure to subscribe to them on iTunes and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to channels and search up Married with Children podcast. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now the guys are going to give their final thoughts and ratings of this week's episode. All right, guys, we are back. It's time for our ratings of, uh, what the hell is this called? <laughs> a Requiem for a Dead Barber. Right. Uh, how many months are you going to go without a haircut because your favorite barber died out of five? And l let's just clarify this. Al's hair would not have grown that long in two months. Uh, I don't know why they cut it to two months. People this whole episode have just been like, why are y'all not bringing that up? Why are y'all not bringing that up? It's the uh, after effects of the uh, um, balding solution. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe Dr. Fur actually worked. Yeah. There it you just, go. It was on delay. Or maybe they just rubbed Al's socks on their heads. <laughs> So, Justin, how many uh, months are you going without a haircut? Because your favorite barber died. Um, I actually really like this episode because, one, like, I kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like, I actually have a barber. I go to him all the time. Like, I, I don't really go anywhere else. So, like, I, I, I think to a lot of people it's, like, silly. But to me it's like, oh, like, I kind of like that too. Maybe not to the extent that I let my hair grow down, you know, six inches or whatever. But – uh, a little bit, like I get it. And so to me, that was really funny and, and a cool thing to kind of poke fun at the way we, uh, who do go to barbers kind of act whenever we can't get to them or whatever. Like we don't want to get haircuts by <laughs> salons and stuff like that. So, um, I'm coming in at four months without a haircut Wow, out of five. You really like it. Good. Jerry, how many months are you going without a haircut out of five because your favorite barber died? So this episode is a classic episode for me just because I love when Al sticks to his guns, picks up a, a problem, and just runs full steam into it. Um, and, and bonus, guys, this episode was actually nominated for an outstanding editing for a series, a multi-camera production, for Larry Harris, who edited this for a 1989 Emmy Awards. It didn't win, but it was nominated. Wow. So that's that's a pretty Bundy way to do it. Um, and I just love this episode. This is a great one to come back to. There's there's fun lines. Um, so I f I'm going four months also. Nothing puts it over the limit to be a five, 
but it's definitely one I could throw on at any point in any kind of mood and love it four months out of five. Wow. Although Al looked ridiculous and he was willing to walk around like he did with his hair long after two months, miraculously, it's just not as weird or unrelatable as the dump of my own was to me. Um, And I know a lot of you love that episode. That was made clear. Uh, You know, nobody bashed us or anything for what we said about it, but you you did make it clear that you liked it. That's, That's fine. Nobody wants you to dislike an episode of Married with Children. Uh, I wish I didn't, you know, but I feel like this was that fine line where it was actually done right. You got to have Al be passionate and also relatable. The thing that is weird is that it also hits an unrelatable point where he goes to the the salon and then they all just become like really feminine. That is a very out of character for Al. It's almost, like I said, like they're brainwashed. I don't even know how. I couldn't even imagine Al doing anything like this or walking around like that or condoning it further than... I I feel like once he got out of the bar, the, the salon chair, he would be like, what the hell is this? And he would have washed it out and then just combed it straight back. I can't believe he actually walked around like that. And, and just bought into it. So that was a little out of, out of character. But I, I wouldn't say it like ruins the episode. I think they were just going for straight humor here. And you gotta like suspend disbelief or whatever. So it's all about entertainment and how you feel about it. And like are you having a good time watching this? So uh, in that respect, I give this a, a 4 out of 5. I really like it. I mean, the only thing I maybe 3.5 to 4 out of 5, somewhere in between the two, is is the lowest I'd go. Because this is really good. It's funny. It's a great time. And we had tons to talk about, clearly. I mean, look at the running time on this episode. So anything that could generate a lot of, you know, fun conversation, that's, that's fine by me. All right, guys. So be sure to tune in next week. We have a huge, huge episode that... Probably should be a special, a Patreon exclusive, but no, it's just a regular episode review of a not-so-regular episode. The next episode we're going to review is I'll See You in Court, air date, June 18th, 2002. Yes, you are hearing me correctly. The show ended in 1997. But this episode was never aired until June 18th, 2002, all because of the Terry Ricolta backlash. What happens in this episode, in the infamous Lost episode, Al and Peg learn they have been videotaped getting intimate at a sleazy motel. The same thing also happened to Steve and Marcy. They decide to take the matter to court. Like we said, there's a Lost episode. It never aired on regular television until... What is that? So five years after the show ended, they were willing to air this. Can you imagine that? Five years after it ended. So how excited are you guys? Uh, have either one of you seen this one? I have not, actually. Yeah, I don't I don't think that I have, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. These, these are the ones that get me, like, kind of... Like, I'm really interested in, like, the history, obviously. And, like, I have a strong fascination with banned or lost or unaired TV shows and movies. Um, I did a big thing on one of them for Nickelodeon, which was a a movie called Crybaby Lane, which was aired one time and then was banned. Later it aired again, but it it was like considered a myth for a long time because nobody had a copy of it, but until it re-aired. But yeah, uh, pretty excited. What about you, Jerry? I'm pretty excited for it. I, I mean, I want to see what's in this episode that they thought w- was going to piss off this lady. Like, I, I, I got to know, because I got to see if they're overreacting or if it's justified. I also want to see how it plays into uh, my feelings and theories on why Terry was so mad about this other episode. So Don't you think that this episode that we just talked about would have been more along the lines of the things she would be 
You know what, you're, Jerry? You're, you're right, because I brought up how I felt like it was more because of the alternative lifestyles of homosexuality, yet they aired this, so you're right. That actually does kind of put a big hole in my theory. Hmm. That, or at least that they didn't feel it was because of that, and they felt it was directly because of the naked women. Yeah. I think it's just their interpretation rather than hers. So I guess we'll find out next week. Mm-hmm. And so will you. <laughs> you know where to be, guys. The Nudie Bar, Wednesdays. We'll see you there with our favorite.